This week, we've seen a huge number of open source news stories that had the potential to shake up the Linux gaming world. We'll talk about it. Plus, the Steam Deck Verified program hits another milestone. And what does the success of Black Myth Wukong tell us about the popularity of the Steam Deck's hardware? We'll talk about all of this and more in this week's Steam Deck news video. First up, let's talk about Dolphin. Dolphin is the incredible Nintendo, GameCube, and Wii emulator, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Well, Dolphin is getting an official flat pack. This is big news since, at least up until this point, the Dolphin team has left the Linux builds up to distributions to package and maintain. So why the sudden change of heart? Well, it's pretty simple. The Steam Deck, of course. Quote, over the past eight years, the Dolphin project has chosen to not create any official builds for Linux, instead opting to relegate that task to Linux distributions. However, with the rise of the Steam Deck, we've observed significant user demand for an official flat pack version of Dolphin. Now, this is from an issue filed on the GitHub for the current flat pack build of Dolphin. And at the time of posting, it was not maintained by the Dolphin team. It was posted by one Oatmeal Dome, uh, one of Dolphin's contributors. The post continues by asking questions about making the current Flathub build the official in-house build of Dolphin, and the thread goes on to discuss the finer questions posed by Oatmeal, and it concludes with the Dolphin team taking control of the repo. As of right now, the Flathub build is not the official version yet, but after some work, the Dolphin team should be able to get their latest builds, official builds, on Flathub. So what does this mean for us as Linux gamers, especially on Steam Deck? Well, the, this means that the builds that are in Flathub should have more regular updating and should remain in sync with the latest version of the emulator and do so with relative quickness. We'll get new features and performance updates sooner, and that means that people using EmuDeck or any of the other options out there should also see major improvements. So thanks to the Dolphin team for their continued work. It's great to see them taking over building uh, the emulator for Flatpak. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this story in the comments below. All right, next up, Wine's VKD3D version 1.13 is available now. Now, according to their release notes, this update has a bunch of optimizations and the biggest ones being basic loop unrolling support in the HLSL compiler, uh, effects compiler support for several version 4.0 plus state objects and miscellaneous bug fixes. Now, don't get this release confused with VKD3D-Proton. These are two closely aligned but distinct projects from each other. Valve wanted to be able to support new optimizations and features faster, so they forked VKD3D a little while ago. Since Valve's scope of supported software is fairly narrow, they can actually be a bit more speedy with their releases. However, Wine is aiming for wider support, so they're justifiably more cautious with their rollout of new features. Anyway, it's good to see Wine making these kind of updates. And speaking of Wine, Microsoft has donated Mono to the Wine project. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Mono is the free and open source .NET runtime. Now, .NET slash Mono is what a huge swath of video games are written in. Unity uses it, Godot is capable of using it, anything that has run on Microsoft's XNA framework uses it, even some open source games like OpenRA use it, and many countless desktop applications and mobile applications too. They're all using some kind of .NET or Mono, and if they're cross-platform, they're definitely using Mono. You know what, I'm kind of at a loss for words, honestly. Let's read Microsoft's official post. The Mono project has been an important part of the .NET ecosystem since it was launched in 2001. Microsoft became the steward of the Mono project when it acquired Xamarin in 2016. The last major release of the Mono project was in July of 2019, with minor patch releases since that time. The last patch release was February of 2024. We are happy to announce that the Wine HQ organization will be taking over as the stewards of the Mono project upstream at Wine Mono slash Mono on GitLab. The source code in existing repos will remain available, although repos may be archived. Binaries will be available for up to four years. Microsoft maintains a modern fork of Mono runtime in the .NET slash runtime repo and has been progressively moving workloads to that fork. That work is now complete and we recommend that active Mono users and maintainers of Mono based application frameworks migrate to .NET, which includes work from this fork. 
We want to recognize that the Mono project was the first .NET implementation on Android, iOS, Linux, and other operating systems. The Mono project was a trailblazer for the .NET platform across many operating systems. It helped make cross-platform .NET a reality and enabled .NET in many new places, and we appreciate the work of those who came before us. Thank you to all Mono developers. Now, this is interesting to see from Microsoft, who have historically been quite hostile towards open source projects, and the fact that they're handing over the reins of Mono to the Wine project, of all things. You know what? That's pretty interesting. It's really exciting, actually. Now, if they could only just open source the Windows kernel and hand that over to Wine as well. Now, if you found this video useful, don't forget to like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube that you want to see more videos just like this. You can also share this video with your friends if that's more your speed. We're on our way to 150,000 subscribers, so if you could help just get us there with one little subscribe, that would be appreciated. And thanks. Okay, let's talk about the Deck Verified program for a minute. They've recently hit another big milestone. Over 1,600 titles are rated either playable or verified, according to uh, SteamDB here. Now, if we just look at playable, it's 10,706, and for Steam Deck Verified, it's 5,328 games. Now, these are great numbers to see, uh, and it is very nice that the, the gap between verified and playable continues to grow because verified should be reserved for those games that perform extremely well on the Steam Deck. So I like seeing the disparity between these two numbers grow. But keep in mind that SteamDB here only shows games that have received an official rating from Valve's verified program. Games don't have to be verified or playable to work on the Steam Deck. And there are tens of thousands of unrated games or even games that are listed as unsupported that work just fine. In fact, games like Black Myth Wukong currently sit at the top of the Steam Deck's most played list with a charming little unknown rating. However, the ever-growing list of verified and playable titles shows that Valve are committed to the Steam Deck. That and the constant stream of beta and stable Steam Deck clients and the SteamOS updates prove the Steam Deck's success. Let's talk about that real quick. First, a rare but long-standing bug with the Steam Deck was the ominous Error 11. It would persist until the deck was restarted, and the latest Steam Deck beta client update noted that the Error 11 issue was fixed. They also fixed the game resolution overrides failing to apply for non-Steam games. Additionally, there were a bunch of uh, Steam input fixes and features that are pretty cool. But something else happened recently that proves just how popular the Steam Deck really is. There have been a number of huge game releases over the last few weeks, and we can use a little bit of clever thinking to figure out just how successful the Steam Deck really is. Now, I have to give a lot of credit to Liam over on Gaming on Linux for pointing this out. I mean, he mentioned in his article here that Valve doesn't like to give out specific numbers when it comes to their products. Instead, they give out relative and average numbers. As I've done many times, I like to use Valve's hardware survey numbers to try to figure out like an absolute number of Steam Deck units in the wild, but this is all based on other numbers that are many years old at this point, so I don't know how accurate those are. But I think this is interesting, because Valve gives out other numbers that we can use. And while this won't give us like absolute totals, it does prove just how popular the Steam Deck is, and continues to be. Uh, when we look at the global top sellers chart on Steam, you see something interesting. Black Myth Wukong is number one, and that's no surprise. I mean, the game has been a smash hit. And if we skip over the free to play titles, number two on this list is the Steam Deck, followed by Warhammer 40,000 Space Marines 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Now, if you know anything about this title, the list is ranked by total revenue, not by units sold. And given that the Steam Deck is on average about six times more expensive than the other competitors here, well, then uh, it would make sense that it's beating them out. But I mean, look at this. For every one Steam Deck sold, Black Myth Wukong has to sell at least six to make up that revenue. And it is beating out the Steam Deck. So if we flip that logic around, then that means that for every five or six copies of Black Myth Wukong, the most popular title on Steam right now, the Steam Deck is selling around one unit. And this is the Steam Deck's 131st week on sale, guys. 
I mean, look at the next most popular paid game on Steam this week, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. It's the second most wishlisted game in Steam history, and it's also a top seller when it comes to pre-orders, and the Steam Deck, after all these years, is still beating it out. I mean, in terms of absolute units, Warhammer would outsell the Steam Deck if it sold six copies for every one deck, and it's not doing that, right? Like, I'm sure when the game actually goes out of pre-purchase and goes on sale, it will probably outsell the Steam Deck at that point, but this is one of the best-selling pre-order games in Steam history. It's one of the most wishlisted games in Steam history, and the Steam Deck is still beating it. The Steam Deck hasn't left the top 100 best-selling games on Steam since it was released, and it's been in the top 10 for pretty much that entire time. It goes to show that performance isn't everything. In fact, performance is mostly a red herring a lot of the time. These numbers prove that the Steam Deck is very well-priced and it's a platform unto itself. And given that back in November, Valve said that they had already sold multiple millions, plural, of Steam Decks, I mean, what are we at here? Four, five, six million? Given that Steam continues to set concurrent player count records, it would not surprise me in the slightest if we were in the latter half of under 10 million. I'd love to hear your take though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's going to do it for this video, but make sure you check out this one where I talk about the first things that you should do with your new Steam Deck. I want to thank my patrons for their continued support. If you want to help support this show, you can do so with the links below. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.